When the opioid epidemic began in the late 1990s, it was driven primarily by the overuse of prescription opioids. But since then, we have seen a skyrocketing abuse of synthetic opioids, and with that, an increase in the number of overdose deaths. Joining me now to discuss a little further from the DEA is Agnes Winokur, as well as George Heim from Miami-Dade Medical Examiner's Office. Thank you both for your time this morning. Agnes, let's start with you. How are the efforts going to try to combat this problem? Are we succeeding? Well, let me give you an indication. In uh, 2022, uh, DEA sees more than 15.6 million fentanyl lace of uh, fake prescription pills and more than 10,000 pounds of fentanyl powder. Now, the DEA laboratory system estimates that this would be potentially uh, more than 379 million uh, potential legal, um, sorry, uh, lethal doses of fentanyl. So it seems like we're trying to wrap our arms around an ocean here. Is that an accurate description? Does it feel like that sometimes? Definitely, unfortunately. So you were recently at the top of the news cycle when the DEA put out a bulletin right around Halloween um, warning parents about potential fentanyl-laced uh, candy that might end up in Halloween baskets. How much of public perception and public knowledge is a big help to you when it comes to trying to combat this problem? Public awareness is incredibly important and it definitely has to be a team effort uh, from all law enforcement, um, all, all media. Uh, right now, drug traffickers are using social media platforms such as Facebook and TikTok and Instagram, uh, using codes and emojis to sell these very dangerous drugs. And it's very important that we continue those efforts for public awareness. George, you were saying that Miami is often ground zero for this effort. What kind of things do you see in your office? Oh, goodness. Uh, I think your timing is right. Around, uh, 2009 when the opioid epidemic was kind of coming to an end because of the closure of the, the uh, pain management clinics, we saw this gigantic wave of new synthetic drugs. Uh, it it's started out with synthetic versions of cathinone and synthetic cannabinoids, but then around 2015 we began to see this surge of opioids, namely fentanyl, and it has continued since 2015, which is a fairly long period of time. And what we're seeing is probably in the neighborhood of several hundred deaths, um, probably every, every couple of months we'll get several hundred deaths of fentanyl. So it is hitting us dramatically. And um, I think overall we've seen about 1,800 deaths over the last five or six years. So um, it is a, it's, it's devastating to our work because um, uh, these things have to be detected and identified. You know, the process of establishing and enforcing standards within the forensic science community um, has been a little bit bumpy, I think you could say, over the last 15 years. How much progress do you think we have made in streamlining the standards process? Well, I think it's a um, tremendous difference. Uh, very good progress, I would say, since the, um, the release of the National Academy of Sciences report in 2008, uh, lots of changes have taken place, not only just in the standards of our operation, but uh, certification, accreditation of laboratories has increased. And also probably one of the most uplifting uh, uh, things that I, I see is the number of educational programs, bachelor's degree, master's degree, graduate degrees in forensic science. So there has been a humongous change in standards and quality of work. Question for both of you, what do you think the biggest obstacle is or the biggest challenges right now facing the forensic science community? I think it's that uh, even the, f the form and the type of different synthetics keep changing. I mean, even now uh, you have the emergence of the rainbow uh, fentanyl tablets, which is all comes with the different colors, uh, tablets to try to appeal to the young population. And, and with that, you, 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 know, you get forms changing uh, qu quite frequently, as well as having new synthetic substances that then we have to try to figure out how to detect and identify. And, and be able to report. I think in, in my branch it's uh, funding, continued funding. Governments cannot let up at this point. We need that additional funding. Uh, the challenge is the technical challenges. Uh, as Agnes said, uh, detecting and seeing things that are changing every day. Uh, so those are big, big challenges that we're trying to meet. Well, we certainly appreciate the work that both of you are doing and we appreciate your time this morning. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. Thank, Thank you. you very much.